Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts. Last week, I streamed on my channel here on YouTube making a really fun mug rug. But before we got started last week making that mug rug, I shared some face masks that I had been sublimating. And many people, check out the comments here, many people asked if I could share the process of how I sublimated these face masks. So that's what this video is all about today. And you might be asking, what is sublimation? Because I got a lot of those questions too. So real quick, sublimation. You do have to have a dedicated printer. And if you're interested in sublimating, uh, research Epson and Sawgrass printers for sublimation. Once you, you put the uh, sublimation inks in your printer, that's it. That's a pretty much a sublimation printer and it will stay a sublimation printer. We don't print anything like regular copies with that printer anymore. It is set up for sublimation. Sublimation ink, when heated with a heat press, uh, actually the ink turns to gas and dyes the fibers that you're working with. So it's permanent and you get some really pretty vibrant permanent prints on t-shirts, hats, face masks, flags, all kinds of stuff. Not to mention your mugs and all kinds of other stuff, right? So that's what sublimation is. You do have to have a special ink. It's sublimation ink. You can research that. And I'll be sharing in this video the sublimation ink that I have used. So let me show you the face mask real quick that I shared last week. <laughs> this one uh, I made with some of my jelly prints, right? This is paint on paper using my jelly print my jelly plate <laughs> and this is the mask that I made using my jelly plate prints. Isn't that really cool? Yes. Then I shared a mask that I made with a quilt block that we made during the happy at home quilt series where we made 53 quilt blocks. This is one of those blocks. And I scanned it on my printer and I made this face mask. Isn't that pretty? I was so proud. I lined it up perfectly right. <laughs> and uh, so that's the quilt block face mask. Then I had fun over the weekend. And do y'all remember this project where we made this pretty table topper? Look at the quilting on that. Isn't that pretty? So this weekend, I put that on the scanner and I made this pretty face mask. I shared pictures of this over on my Facebook page. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my goodness. I would love a t-shirt with that on it. Yes. So today, this morning, I went out and I took some pictures of my azaleas because I wanted to show that you can also do this process with photographs. Like, see, I'm working on a quilt right back there with photographs, sublimation photographs. I took a picture of my azaleas and this is the face mask that we're going to make today. Pretty abstract looking arranged like this, but isn't that gorgeous? Those are my azaleas, y'all. Oh, it's so pretty. And the cool thing about sublimation is you can wash this and it's not going to fade. It's going to stay nice and pretty. So this is a full tutorial. I feel like I need to slow down. This is going to be a full tutorial. I'm going to walk you through how to set up your template on the computer using Inkscape. And if you already know how to do that part, then you might want to fast forward about 12 and a half minutes. And then I actually start the process of sublimating the mask. Okay. And if you hear birds in the background, my two birds are going nuts today. I don't know if it's the spring. I don't know if it's because everyone in the house is busy and not in the room with them. Whatever it is, they're making lots of noise today and you can hear it in parts of this video. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, if you already know how to set up and crop your photos and all that stuff, then skip about 12 and a half minutes and then we're sublimating. Okay, and I actually made two of these. This is the one that uh, I did with the PDF version of my photograph. But I also set it up as a PNG and do another one. Yes. Let's go ahead and jump right in. 
So these are the face masks that I'm working with today. They're the PPE washable face mask. Three come in a package and they are 93% polyester and 6% spandex. The key is to have a high polyester content in whatever you're sublimating. So before we even go to the computer, I'm going to lay my face mask down on a sheet of copy paper and trace the outline of my mask. And this is going to give us a working template to crop our photo. Once I'm done tracing this, we're going to go over to my Epson ET15000. I'm going to scan this right to my computer. So a lot of the preparation work for printing these face masks, for me anyways, happens here on the computer. The program that I like to work with is called Inkscape. I am using version 0.91 and if you're interested in downloading Inkscape, it is a free program to use and you can find it by visiting inkscape.org. I'm going to open up Inkscape and upon default, when you open up Inkscape, you'll see the rectangle on the screen. That is by default size A4 paper. We're going to be printing on 8.5 by 11 today. And so I'm going to go up to File. And I'm going to change the size of our page by clicking on Document Properties. A new box opens up and I'm going to change it from A4 to US letter and you'll see the little rectangle change shape just a little bit. That is the size of the paper we're using today. So we can close the document properties. So let's bring in our face mask template, okay? I'm gonna go up to file and we're going to import. We're gonna find where we have saved our face mask scan. You know, we just scanned in the face mask. I'm gonna click on that and we're going to open that up. Now this face mask template is true to size, which I love that. Let's go ahead and just turn this into the orientation that we traced it in, right? Let's zoom in a little bit closer. To make this really super duper easy, I want to fill in this face mask template. I'm gonna come over and hit the paint bucket tool and we're gonna go right inside that face mask template and click. And what that's done is created a workable template that we can now work from, right? We can use this to clip our picture. Let's go ahead and get rid of the PNG version of this face mask and we can just delete that. I want you to notice the size of this face mask. Let's change this to inches. This is true to size, so it's a little over seven inches wide and a little over five and a half inches tall. That's the true to size template that we're working with. Let's just move that off to the side for a second. Next, we're gonna bring in the photograph that we're working with. Uh, this morning, I went out and took a picture of my azaleas, which I should have done a couple days ago when they were in the prime. Some of the flowers have started falling off, but that's okay, they're still really pretty. <clears throat> Pardon me, I took my cell phone out and took a photograph using my cell phone and I have uploaded that to the computer. So let's go and import our photo from this morning. And we're going to hit OK. Now I want you to pay attention. When this photograph opens, let's zoom out. I want you to see the size of this photograph because that's going to play a huge part in the quality of your print, right? If you're working with a really small photograph and you're making it bigger, your picture is gonna be pixelated and unclear. So working with a larger file size with your photograph is better. We can always shrink this and reduce it down, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make this a little bit smaller so that we get more of the flowers in our face mask, right? There we go. And now we can select this face mask and move it right on top. Let's zoom in so you can see. 
So there's my face mask template. Now I have filled this with an opaque blue color so that when we move the mask over top of the image, you get a really good idea of what the face mask is gonna look like, right? So now we can just play with the orientation of what we want to fill our face mask with. Uh, I kind of like that. The green is coming down the middle of the face mask. Let's go ahead and try that. So the face mask is selected. I'm going to hold down shift and also select the photograph. With both items selected, I'm going to right click on my mouse. A new box opens up and we're going to hit set clip. Now what that, done, what that has done is clipped or cropped our photo inside that mask. See that? Now on my keyboard, I'm going to hit Control D and make a copy of that face mask. Let's move that off to the side. We'll click on the original, right click again, and release clip. And what that does is bring back our template and our original photo. Just to play around, let's make another one because we'll choose from two different images. Let's move the mask template over here and get more of the pink going up the middle of the mask. See that? The template is selected. I'm going to hit shift and select a photograph, right click on my mouse and hit set clip. I'm going to duplicate. Control D, make a copy of that and move it off to the side. Now we can click on the original, right click again and hit release clip. So at this point we have two really good images that we can work with. So I'm just gonna erase the template and the original photograph. Here are our two different templates that we're going to work with, right? Let's zoom in so you can see them up close a little bit. They're both selected. Now this face mask, we're gonna be printing one side and then the other, right? That's just the style of this mask. So we need to make another copy with them both selected. We're going to Control D, duplicate again. That's made a copy on top. We can come up and mirror image those top versions and move them over. Did you see that? There's a little mirror image right up here on this toolbar. So now we get a really good idea of what this face mask is going to look like, right? Because we can see both sides side by side. Let's see. Now to choose which one to print, we are going to use the bottom set where the pink comes up through the middle of the mask. Let's go ahead and get rid of this top version. At any point, if you want to pause the video, if you're trying to follow along with me with all the steps, feel free to pause the video and work with the program and your photograph and then restart the video. So now this is why it's really important that you have resized the screen, the page on your Inkscape, right? Because now we're going to move these templates and they need to fit within that eight and a half by 11. Of course, if you're using bigger paper, you'll have more room to work with, right? I'm going to try to fit them both on an eight and a half by 11. Now, don't forget, <laughs> don't forget you have page margins. So when moving your image within this page, you want to make sure that it's not right close to that edge because it will either resize your template or cut portion of your face mask off, right? So we wanna make sure we stay away from the edges as much as possible. Let's see, we'll move this one up just a little bit and over. So we can move this one up and over just a little bit. Now for today's video, I'm going to be saving this image as a PNG file. I've noticed that PNGs print a little bit brighter than saving as a PDF, which I usually like to do. Uh, but just so that we don't forget, I'm just going to type on here uh, PNG. There we go. 
Now we can go ahead and save this. Now when saving as a PNG, we have to actually select all the items. So you'll see each one of the three items on the page has a box around it. I'm hoping that you can see my sidebar. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. Hopefully that's above me up here so that you can see. Uh, we're going to export. You can also do this by going to File and Export PNG. That's when the little box over here opens up, right? We're going to hit Export As, and we're going to find a folder in your computer to save it as. And we're going to call this Pink Flower Face Mask. Name your file and hit Save. You're not quite done yet. You need to come back over and hit export. And I'm hoping that you can see that and my face is not in the way. There we go. We have successfully saved a PNG image of our uh, face mask and we're going to close this. Now we're back here at the desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and find the face mask file. Here we go. And we're going to click on, where did it go? Pink flower face mask. There is our PNG. So from here, I'm going to go to print. I have my Epson printer selected. We're going to, I like to print from the paper tray and load my paper from behind. And then we're going to change the paper type to a presentation matte paper and hit print. Again, if you are trying to follow along in all the steps and I've gone too fast, feel free to pause the video now and catch up to this part and print your PNG. Now for today's face mask, I will be using Hypo Sublimation Ink and A Sub 8.5 by 11 sublimation paper. So here is our print of our PNG face mask template. I'm gonna go ahead and take a pair of scissors and just cut these two pieces apart. We will be sublimating each side independently, one at a time. You'll notice when printing sublimation, uh, the print is actually much duller than what it's going to finish on your substrate. Today I'm gonna be using Krylon Easy Tack Spray to keep the mask in place and a little bit of heat tape. I'm gonna take this over to a box I have set up on the side and spray it in the box just really lightly. You don't need to use a lot of this. And then we're going to position the mask right onto the print, carefully lining up everything. I like to take a piece of copy paper and put it in between the two layers and tape it in place so it doesn't move. I lay down another sheet of copy paper and tape that to my pressing board. And then one more sheet of copy paper on top. The heat press settings I'm gonna be using today are 375 for 60 seconds. This is a Morph uh, heat press. It's one of the five in ones or seven in ones that came with a whole bunch of different attachments. I've removed the pad that's usually on the bottom so that I can use my pressing board. We're going to fast forward, pressing for 60 seconds. And when the time is up, we're going to carefully lift up the top of our heat press and swing that away. Now we want to be careful not to move anything because it's still hot and it could transfer our image into parts of our mask that we don't want. But once it's cooled off a little tiny bit, we can start removing the tape and remove our mask from the print. Don't know if it's necessary to use the three pieces of tape. I just like to make sure that nothing moves. <laughs> and then we can just peel that mask right off of the print. So there is our first side. And we're just gonna repeat these same steps to do the other side. 
So we can get rid of that paper. Go spray the other side of the mask template. You want to spray that in a box so it doesn't make a mess all over the place. And then we're going to carefully line up the other side. Again, putting a piece of copy paper in between the two layers. Securing that so it doesn't move at all. And I like to press my images with the actual uh, sublimation paper on top. Again, removing the tape. And then it's time for the big reveal. Here is our finished Azalea face mask using the PNG file. It's kind of abstract, but I love it that it is my flower bush in the front of my house. That's awesome. So I'm also going to make a second one using a PDF version because that's usually what I work with. And I noticed, as I stated before, usually the PDFs print off darker. And for sure, the PDF version of this face mask is darker with a lot more contrast. And I kind of really like that. I'm going to do the other side of this second mask. I'll go heat press that and we'll take a look at both of the face mask. Here we are. One thing for sure is you go through a lot of butcher paper, copy paper <laughs> in order to protect what you're working on and your heat press. So these are my two Azalea face masks. The PDF version is on the bottom. The PNG version is on top. I am a favorite of the PDF version. Let's take a look at them up close. So pretty and so much fun. So I hope you enjoyed how I sublimate these face masks to make them nice and pretty. And uh, I hope that answers a lot of the questions that you had about the process and maybe what sublimation is. If you are completely new to sublimation like I was, uh, you might wanna start watching some sublimating videos, how to convert an Epson printer or how to set up a printer for sublimation. You might want to watch some reviews on sublimation ink and heat presses. You can do it with your Cricut Easy Presses as well. So it's a whole new world uh, that I have gotten into and I love it because as a multimedia artist, I work on hard substrates like cups and stuff, but my passion is fabric arts and just imagine the possibilities with art quilts using sublimation. And I really think as a, a business owner who makes quilts on commission, primarily t-shirt memory quilts, being able to sublimate photos that last and don't fade is a game changer. All right, everybody, I'm off to make some mug rugs today. So that's what I'm doing. I hope you have a fantastic day. And to all my Patreons, I had so much fun with you on Zoom. I can't wait to see you again. Bye, everybody.